Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to join Maria and Rinchen in welcoming Mr. Imran Khan, chairman of the PTI. And I would like to say that we share your passion, we share your conviction, we share your struggle to make Pakistan a better country, more educated, more democratic, more progressive. And in the same vein, we've been working to bridge this gap between the Pakistanis who are based overseas, who have expertise, who have experience, who have knowledge, and we believe that this needs to be shared with their counterparts, students in Pakistan. All great countries have been built with an excellent education system. And it's also important to improve the quality of information, which is why we have come up with this initiative, which we have named Pakistan Knowledge Initiative. So what this initiative is, we want to create academic linkages between the Pakistani academics, students, professionals who are based all over the world, who have gained valuable experience. And we want to have some seminar uh, series started in Pakistan where they can go and speak to the students, interact with them, and share their experiences with the students in Pakistan. And not just that, but they can also financially contribute by making donations for a number of projects. For example, the Namal College, the Namal Knowledge City project, which is also one of the most ambitious projects which were initiated by Imran. I've been involved with the organizing of Pakistan Future Leaders Conference for the last three years. And every year I used to think that yes, we all gather here every year in Oxford from all parts of the country, and we do sit down, deliberate, debate on the key issues that face Pakistan, which is good in its own right, and it should be done uh, more often. But I always used to think that something concrete, something uh, practical should also come out of these gatherings that we have every year. So this time when Jonathan Marmegan uh, came up to us and we started thinking around various ideas, this one clicked. And then with the generous support of uh, a number of uh, key contributors, uh, we've got Samiullah Saab, Oxford Aviation, uh, and from Tech Access, uh, Sardar Ghalib Saab, we've got uh, Muzaffar Chaudhary Saab here, with the contribution of a lot of these people and with the support of the academics, students, professionals who have gathered here, come from all over the country. Today we have launched the Pakistan Knowledge Initiative, and I'm sure that it's going to play a vital role in making Pakistan better educated and more educated. <laughs> So I don't want to take a lot of your time. Uh, I understand that we are all waiting for Imran. So I'd li now like to invite Imran to address the Oxford Union. Adnan, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the Oxford Union for inviting me here, Pakistan Oxford Society, and especially this, uh, the Pakistani Knowledge Initiative taken by Adnan and, and his team. As he quite rightly said, knowledge is the basis on which uh, nations are built on, and this is a great initiative because this will enable our best talent pool, which is outside Pakistan, to uh, coordinate this talent pool so that we can not only collect money for Namal University, but also have the knowledge capital. We need PhDs, we need professors uh, to come and work in Namal University, which is my passion. My mission is politics. My passion is this university, which I hope will, inshallah, become the Oxford University of Pakistan. Um, 
The topic today is leadership. And I'm conscious today because my two boys are here. And I don't want them to be bored. So I'll try and be very crisp today because the first time they've come to hear me. Leadership. All of us have the ability to be leaders. Everyone has the potential to become a leader. What makes a leader? The first and foremost is the, is the vision. Leaders have dreams. Uh, and, and those dreams are beyond the self. There has, there has never been a leader who does, who, whose dream is concentrated on, on the self. So my great inspiration is the great Iqbal. Iqbal, in my opinion, was probably the greatest Muslim f philosopher in the last 500 years. And he came up with this concept of a leader. He used the symbol of Shaheen, the eagle. And why did the eagle soar above everyone else, which is what makes a leader? Because the Shaheen, the eagle, broke away the chains that keep us grounded. So what stops us from achieving this great God-given potential are the various chains that make us uh, tread the trodden path. So the Shaheen, the eagle, has great dreams. Uh, the difference is not talent. Different, difference is not education. Difference is that a leader dreams what others are scared to dream of. Dream the impossible. And then that dream is, as I repeat, is not based on the self. They always think bigger than themselves. It's either their nation, the society, and then they struggle to achieve that dream. Now, uh, the quality that distinguishes leaders is their ability to take pressure. Winston Churchill became a leader in Britain. When the biggest crisis was faced by the country, they looked upon someone who could take the pressure. How do you take pressure when you struggle? When you struggle and when you have setbacks, you pick yourself up, you resume your struggle, it's eventually you get stronger. Each time you pick yourself up, you get stronger. So a Nelson Mandela, 27 years the man spent in jail, but his dream was not restricted to himself. He was offered everything. The apartheid regime offered him everything except what he wanted, one man, one vote. A leader never compromises on his dream. The moment you start a compromise, it's a downward spiral. So it's when you stick to your dream and take all the pressure which, which uh, you have to, to achieve that dream, you, you build that resilience, the endurance, the strength. And it's like, uh, it's like uh, physical exercise. The bigger weights you pick up, the stronger you get. The more you pit yourself against resistance, the stronger you get. Um, but above all, no one has ever achieved anything who's always put himself before, uh, before the society. So whether it was our great leader, Kai, uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Qaid Azam, he was dying of, of TB. He never let anyone know that he was dying because he realized that he was the only one who could have achieved the, uh, the dream of Pakistan. So, it wasn't for him. He w the dream for Pakistan was not for himself because he was already dying of cancer, uh, of TB. The dream was something beyond the self. And so, uh, so was Gandhi, another great leader. Mandela, uh, a prophet, peace be upon him, the greatest leader. When he uh, struggled for 13 years, every a hardship he faced in these 13 years. And eventually when he, built, when, he, when he headed the state of Medina and all the hardships they faced, but when he was in the 10 years when it was at the peak of his power, 
The famous address at Arafat, where 100,000 people standing uh, and him addressing them from the Mount of Arafat. And he asked the people, can you bear witness in front of God that I've finished, I have, I have uh, uh, conveyed his message to you? So the 100,000 people said yes. And then people started crying. They started crying because they realized that he had just come to deliver a message. The objective was not power. He still lived in that little house, which was that Masjid and Nabi, the little few rooms which, which he had when he came with nothing. So it was never for the self. And the moment he had achieved his mission, everyone cried because they knew that he was going to go. Similarly, uh, if you look at any, any big name, they were always, they had a bigger vision. So number one is the vision. Number two, a leader can only achieve his mission if he conquers his fears. The biggest impediment in the way of people achieving their mission is that they get scared. They get scared of humiliation, failure. A lot of people don't attempt things because they're scared that people will laugh at them. People get scared because uh, they're scared they'll lose their livelihood. I'll lose my job, I might not get a better job, and so they don't take a risk. And then, of course, above all, the greatest fear of death. That stops people from, from uh, chasing their dreams. So fear is the biggest impediment in the way, not just of someone becoming a leader, but from anyone achieving their potential in life. It's, uh, it's fear that, that stops us along the way, makes us compromise. In my 13 years in politics, so many times, and 16 years in politics, so many times, uh, I was offered compromises to become part of a government, accept something less. There's always a temptation during bad times to accept something uh, lesser than your dream. And, and that's where the downward slide, as I said, starts. So fear is you get scared along the way, people will say you can't do it. The moment you accept in your mind that you can't do it, you won't do it. As long as you think, as long as you do not accept defeat, failure cannot defeat you. You only lose when you give up. As long as you keep pursuing your dream, every setback is a, is, is a time to analyze where you went wrong. Analyze your mistakes, correct them, pick yourself up, start your struggle again. One of the great attributes of a good leader is his ability to analyze where he went wrong. The ability to be his, their own be best critic. They should be able to analyze because you can always um, come up with a wrong analysis and go take the wrong road. Uh, when, you are, when you have a setback, you will always have access to a lot of advice. A lot of people will be giving you suggestions. Su suggestions are free, so there are plenty of them. It's then the ability to know. And you should be your own best critic. And finally, a leader must have integrity. You cannot have a leader who does not have credibility. People only follow someone who they trust. So all the great leaders, if you, and our great leader, Jinnah, or even his opponents always knew him to be an honest man. He spoke straight, people trusted him, they knew where they stood with him. Of course, that was also the greatest, our prophet, uh, peace be upon him, was called uh, the honest one, the truthful one, al uh, If you, a leader cannot not be credible. You can't be a leader if you do not have credibility. So credibility is one of the biggest reasons why people follow you. They, will, they have to trust you to uh, go out and risk their lives for you. So all great leaders always were trusted by the, by the people who followed them. So these are the three main qualities that makes a leader. Uh, from my own experience, uh, I found when I played cricket as captain, cricket was the only sport that needs leadership. No other sport needs a leader. Coach is everything. I found in cricket that 
when the chips were down, the entire team looked towards the captain. Uh, captaincy only came in moments of crisis. If you were doing well, you didn't need a captain, but you needed a captain when there was a crisis. And the moment the captain went down, the team went down with him. As long as the captain would not ac accept defeat, the players always looked at his body language, not the speeches he made. What was his body language? If his body language betrayed fear or, or if, he, if the body language reflected defeat, the team would give up. Uh, when I was building the hospital, it was far more difficult than something I had ever done in, on the cricket field. And all along the way, there were people who used to say, you can't do it. The first ever meeting we had, we were trying to clear the concept of building a cancer hospital in Pakistan. So I had 20 doctors, top doctors from Lahore invited to give me advice how to start, how to build a cancer hospital. 19 out of 20 said you cannot build a cancer hospital in Pakistan. Uh, the government of Punjab had tried, they had failed to build the hospital. Only one said that you can build a hospital, but that doctor said that you cannot treat cancer patients free. Today, Shaukat Hanam is the only private cancer hospital anywhere in the world where 70% of patients get free treatment. It, it was awarded by the World Health Organization uh, WHO awarded Shaukat Hanam for services to humanity as the only private cancer hospital, which is also the biggest charitable institution in Pakistan. And then when I came into politics, for most of my 16 years of politics, people laughed, made fun of me. It's too naive, doesn't understand politics. Uh, and all along the way, I was told one thing. To succeed in Pakistani politics, you have to do as the Romans do. So you have to uh, uh, make compromises and so on. And I was always offered compromises. Uh, today, the only reason Tariq and Saf is by far the fastest growing party in Pakistan, had I compromised, this would not have happened. It's because people in Pakistan um, as they say, an idea whose time has come. Finally, people have realized that it's the only political party that they can trust. Uh, Tariq Ansaf is the fastest growing party in Pakistan's youth because the youth wants change. And although every, uh, even the other status quo parties talk about change, the youth of Pakistan today trusts Tariq Ansaf. Had I compromised along the way, this would not be the position today. And it certainly would not be the position where Tariq Ansaf today is poised. And I'm making a prediction in front of all of you. The next election will be swept by Tariq Ansaf. On behalf of both the Oxford Union, Oxford University Pakistan Society, and I think everyone here, I wanted to say a huge thank you, Imran, for coming today and for giving this hugely inspirational talk. I really think I speak on behalf of everyone here when I say that your, your thoughts on leadership, on overcoming every single fear that we have, and on standing up for what is right are things that we all need to think about a lot, especially for those of us who are students and are looking towards going perhaps into politics later on. As a, as a small thank you from the union, as a, as a former alumni, you said that this might be the last time that you ever come to visit us. So we wanted to give you a photo of, uh, from one of our archives of what the chamber used to look like when Benazir Bhutto was president. Um, as a <laughs> thank you.